Thanks so much for that update there, Jimmy. Well, South African Finance Minister Nkang Kanene tabled his medium-term budget policy speech earlier today. Nene highlighted that the country's tax revenue is below budget due to slow growth. Here's what he had to say about GDP expectations in South Africa. When we tabled the 2014 budget in February, we expected the economy to grow by 2.7% this year. The revised estimate is now 1.4%. The Treasury projects that growth will reach 3% only in 2017. This downward revision is partly because of a weak global environment, including the slowdown in our trading partners, Europe, China, and other emerging economies. We need economic growth of around 5% a year to decisively reduce unemployment and poverty and to transform our social and economic order. Well, we heard the minister's uh, expectations there with regard to GDP. Let's unpack this now with several of our analysts that we joined by today. We uh, kick off this discussion with our esteemed level of panelists. We start with Edward Kisveter. He's the chief executive of uh, Alexander Forbes. We also go to Herman Mashaba, who is the founder of Libazi Investments. We've got Kaz Kavalia representing Busa, as well as uh, Conrad Reis. Race. There we go, MD at Standard and Poets. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. I'm a lucky girl to be surrounded by so many brains. Uh, but let's get this uh, unpacked and excited. To pick up on the GDP numbers, Edward, from your perspective, the revision is in line with what the IMF has forecast for South Africa. I think that's important, but also is the bad news in, in, in the story. Uh, I mean, everything in our economy, in the well-being of our society relies on us growing. As mm. the minister said, Without that, we cannot address our poverty issues. We cannot address uh, the creation of jobs and ultimately improving the well-being of South Africans. And I think whilst it's important to note that the global economy is weak, um, it's still not enough to pacify us that our own growth prospects are such low. I think that's the gloom in the story. Uh, the downward projection for, for, for this year of 1.4% and 3% and only in the outer year of the planning period um, is just not good enough for us uh, if we want to do that. So I think the minister acknowledges it um, and clearly um, the policy statement is what it is. We incorrectly call it um, a mini budget. It's not a mini budget. It's a statement of intent by Treasury and government uh, to give you a view of how it sees the future and what it needs to do. Uh, in that regard, the right uh, kind of messaging, uh, the question will always be how specific uh, when we get into the details and uh, is it enough is but, but it more about that is it enough herman maybe to come to you on this one now our emerging market peers are expected to grow at about five percent uh, just next year we still have quite a way to go the ndp does this put it on uh, shaky ground maybe well i think uh, we've got to really be concerned as a country to to really be experiencing 1.4 percent growth and obviously it's a prediction are we going to really make it I think you talk to really most of the, the analysts and economists, even this 1.4% uh, is actually quite doubtful. But unfortunately, it doesn't really augur well uh, for, for our country. And I think uh, the question for us as a country, how do we get uh, our country to levels of 5% as the, the minister has uh, alluded to? Because we sit with uh, what high unemployment, we sit with uh, really uh, so many social issues that, that uh, the country is facing. But at the same time, we have this beautiful uh, um, to policy statement, the national development plan. I think the challenge for us as a country, how are we going to really implement this? Because from a government's point of view, we we believe it's, it's now government policy. But at the same time, I think for me as a South African, I've really been expressing this concern that uh, uh, the biggest uh, partner in, in, in government was the, the, the COSATU, still obviously regards uh, NDP not to really be their policy. So obviously really sending this uh, mixed uh, signal, sending this mixed uh, policy statements, unfortunately doesn't really augur well for, for our country. So let's really hope that uh, we can really have government the entire tripartite alliance uh, to really adopt this policy as a framework to really help take our country to the next level. It also needs private sector participation, which is what we often hear. And Cass, maybe you can uh, speak on their behalf, maybe more from the banking perspective. Uh, is this giving you any confidence at all, the, the minister's speech today? Uh, look, the minister talked about the role of the private sector, the need for private sector investment and so on. And we often get accused as a private sector of being unpatriotic and not investing enough in our country. Mm. We need to ask ourselves why. I mean, the private sector, South African private sector, is the leading 
investor on the rest of the continent, okay? Why are we investing on the rest of the continent and not investing significantly as we should be in our own country? And that's sim simply because the conditions are being created where we can invest. Now, the private sector will invest where there's a reasonable return and there's a reasonable profits. Mm -hmm. And the environment is there for the private sector to invest with confidence. And that's what we need to create in our country. We, we're not going to address the problems and the issues that the minister talked about in his statement without economic growth. Economic growth, private sector investment, generates profits, increases increasing profit, that generates taxes, and, and we then use those taxes to address a whole lot of the issues we have in our country. And so it, it's got to be about that, and, and the real discussion has got to be what do we need to do to create the environment for the private sector to invest increasingly in this country mm. uh, and 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 i don't think we're having that discussion not having that discussion before we get to that discussion conrad you are rating sky <laughs> you need to give it to us uh, as as hard and as honest as it comes with uh, the rest of the continent being an attractive environment as Cass has already alluded to what does this do for us uh, from a ratings perspective Look, I, I guess I'd like to go back to the, the point that was made earlier. Is it enough? Is it enough to avoid another downgrade? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in, in that respect, uh, as, as far as we are concerned at Standard & Poor's, look, we've had two consecutive downgrades since uh, October 2012, the last one just now in, in June uh, 2014. The rating now is a triple B minus with a stable outlook on the cusp of like investment grade, non-investment grade. So another move on the rating would obviously be a disastrous one. But um, uh, where we sit at the moment, I think uh, we have kind of worked the kind of news that came through the medium term budget policy statement today. This is kind of factored into the, the rating we have today. But uh, certainly the fact that the economy is only growing by 1.4% and the weakness of the growth in the economy for some time now has been one of the main factors why the rating has been sort of as weakened, why the rate rating has been downgraded. Uh, so that's, that's certainly the... Uh, that they had to, to scale back growth in the economy again is, is certainly is a negative. But on the other hand, I guess I would say at least now we are looking, I think, at a fairly realistic conservative growth forecast in, in the budget. There certainly will be implementa implementa implications, sorry, implications uh, for, the, for the fiscal performance and the budget deficit and the debt dynamics. Uh, again, as a declaration of, of intent today, the medium-term budget policy statement certainly uh, was hitting on like expenditure restraint, cutting expenditures, possibly in the next budget, increasing taxes. Uh, if that all would come together, yes, uh, one could see a, a strong effort to fiscal consolidation and making sure that we are staying on a sustainable path. Well, we certainly hope so. But coming back to that statement, is it enough with the, such a realistic outlook, which is actually a harsh one to accept, Herman? Uh, how does this place your view on in international investors when you liaise with uh, people from outside of South Africa? Well, I think it really becomes really quite difficult when you have to lure investors in, in an economy growing at 1.4% when uh, you look at uh, general growth patterns in Africa. I mean, you, you know, I think unfortunately our country is actually the, the worst performing economy economy, one of the worst performing economy in Africa, which is really quite unfortunate because our country has got so much potential and capacity. We just really need uh, the right economic framework. Uh, to really help steer this this economy to the next level. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know m m my views uh, as far as labor leg legislation is concerned. I think we really need a legis uh, labor legislation that can help create jobs in our country. Whereas at the moment, we have a labor legislation that actually discourages uh, uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs uh, to, 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 to grow. We, we, we don't really allow small businesses in this country to really be the players. And I think it's, it's something that all of us in South Africa, we are aware about. So if we believe uh, that when we think that big business is going to really be the one to steer economic activity in this country, we, we must be actually be fooling ourselves. So we need policies where we can uh, encourage uh, entrepreneurship, encourage uh, small business development, but we need the right uh, labor legislation regime to encourage, to, to encourage that. Obviously, another factor that for me the last uh, few months that I'm really beginning to get concerned about is uh, the B legislation. Mm. You know, every day I listen to uh, policymakers, we're coming more and more with uh, punitive 
BE legislation. I think let us use BE legislation to encourage investments in our country. Without any doubt, uh, we need to address uh, and redress uh, the, the ills of the past. Mm. But we cannot really do it by punishment. We, uh, if we don't really need to really be successful, let us really use incentives and let's uh, encourage business to actually invest in the space. But let us not really use punishment as a vehicle. Sounds like a lot for us to unpack once we return from the ad break. But do stay with us because after the break we continue this discussion about the medium term budget policy statement. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to this uh, CNBC Africa special where we're unpacking the uh, finance minister's medium term budget policy review today. But uh, just before the ad break, we were touching on the level of investment and what it means to attract uh, investment into South Africa in such a depressing environment. And Edward, you had pointers that you wanted to highlight on this? Yeah, I think we, we often beat ourselves, um, so it's not all doom and gloom. Uh, we've just had an experience um, in Alexander Forbes when we listed that there's significant international interest in South Africa as an investment destination. Um, you know, we, we were able to attract the interest of a significant um, investor to buy a 34% stake, which was an, a stake worth over 3.3 uh, billion rand, together with the offshore investors, probably puts our share register, um, you know, at, at uh, close to, to 40%. Uh, of the total investment. Mm. So I think that what's important is to understand that investors also look through um, the macro environment and look for good companies and so that doesn't let us get away with creating good companies and that attracts investment and that influences uh, people like um, Moody's and, and Standard and & Poor in terms of how they rate us. The, the important thing today is, I mean, the minister has to be complimented for taking over the baton at a very difficult time. Mm. All of his messaging was right. An important corner piece for any government is its intention on its fiscal framework. And I think there the messaging is right. It is about cutting back on expenditure. Um, the thing that I miss is the quality of expenditure, which is important. Um, and then secondly, uh, um, understanding that we need to review our tax position. But that's a double-edged sword again. But as far as the intent to reduce the, the budget deficit, um, as well as the current account deficit uh, view is, is a quite important messaging uh, that the minister provides today. Again, the detail of how effectively we can implement that is what would make the difference and therefore influence uh, the growth traje trajectory. Mm -hmm. 1.4 is already low as it is. It would be a travesty if we can't even achieve the 1.4. Well, let's certainly hope there is an optimistic outlook overall. Another uh, note that uh, Nene has uh, also made mention of are adjustments uh, in order to protect the rand from depreciating further, which hopefully might uh, see investors taking advantage of that weaker currency. Let's take a look. As in the past years, there are various shifts of funds and minor adjustments. I'll highlight just a few. 350 million rands for international relations and cooperation to compensate for the depreciation of our currency. So there we have the figure, 350 million rand. Cass, maybe to come to you, so often when we hear about a depreciating rand, it's always expected to have a positive impact for those uh, exporting in the South African market. But we're not seeing that with manufacturing being an industry that is dying. Yeah, we, we, we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that with, with, with mining. We've missed, essentially, missed the mineral boom. And, and so I think, you know, depreciating rand is fine so long as we actually having the economic fundamentals in place to produce goods to export, uh, which we, we're not doing to the extent that we should. I mean, I, I agree with Edward. I, I'm not, I'm certainly not promoting a view here that this is all bad news. I think the minister has sent out the right messages. Mm. The, the problem in our country is that we continue to send out the right messages, but then we don't actually get together, and it's not just government's issue, it's all stakeholders, government, business, labor. We don't get together and ask ourselves, what do we need to do in the next, not five years, in the next 20 years, in the national interest, not in business's interests or in labor's interests or government's interests, mm. but in the national interest, and, and we don't have those sorts of discussions. So, so you know, there's, I, I don't think anybody can run away from the fact that there is something fundamentally wrong in, in our country because we are not using the opportunities and the strength we have to actually get far more economic growth than we are actually projecting in the next five years. 
Let's touch on that, Conrad. This depressing environment that we create, is that, uh, does it resonate in the credit ratings or is it us just finding someone to blame because we're creating this depression for ourselves? I mean, it certainly it resonates in the rating. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't have gone through, uh, through uh, uh, two downgrades over the last uh, two years, practically. But to come back to the issue of like the weak rand and manufacturing, and it, it just highlights again uh, the need for more structural reforms in, in, in South, Af uh, South Africa. It, it highlights the need uh, for changes in, in, in the labor market and labor legislation. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, our textbook would be we have a much weaker rand now, and it's been depreciating quite a lot, and, and probably there will be more to come. And one would make the argument normally, well, that must be a massive repricing of South African labor, and that should make South Africa a lot more competitive. Now, if that labor would come to work, it might be different, but obviously we have gone through a long period of, of very long strikes that have hit major sectors in the South African economy quite, hef uh, quite, quite heavily. So again, there we had the advantage of the weaker end, but it did not come to, uh, to, to benefit the country because you had other issues. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a very, very interesting study from the World Bank out there about uh, manufacturing in South Africa and competitiveness in the South African manufacturing sector. And it highlights uh, so many deficiencies, whether it's about container handling costs in South Africa, whether it's the lack of infrastructure, labor again. And, and these are all structural issues. And when you look at this report, you fully understand that actually the advantage we are getting from a much weaker rent at the moment is not going to help us because it's not going to deal with all these structural deficiencies. And it almost seems unfortunate because the problems that you've highlighted won't take uh, a, a week to be fixed, unfortunately. No well, we will return to this discussion, but we are taking a short break. But when we do come back, the panel will continue to dissect the medium-term budget policy meeting. We'll take a look at tax, uh, as well as at the labor issues that have been highlighted. And uh, what about ABLE? Do stay tuned. Welcome back. Now, the South African Reserve Bank uh, offered African Bank a bailout of 10 billion rand after it collapsed. Minister Nene announced that additional funds have been allocated to the Reserve Bank as well as the relisting of ABLE. Let's take a quick look at his speech. It became clear earlier this year that the African Bank was in difficulty. After consideration of the implications for the wider financial system, it was resolved that African Bank should be placed under curatorship. The intervention was led by the Reserve Bank and the National Treasury and included participation by other banks, private investors and the Public Investment Corporation. In support of the restructuring, the Treasury has provided a 7 billion rents assurance to the Reserve Bank. Our expectation is that the new African Bank will relist on the stock exchange early next year and that curatorship will be concluded without the use of taxpayer money. Good news all around there. And just before the break, uh, Cass Covadia, you were saying, what's ABLE got to do with it? But <laughs> I want to look at this with an optimistic view that something went wrong here. Treasury stepped in, members of the banking industry stepped in, the Reserve Bank stepped in, and we're hopefully going to solve the problem now. So surely this uh, should be kudos to us. No, absolutely kudos to us. That's why I was so critical of one of his sister agencies when they ah. criticized the Reserve Bank's action. I mean, the Reserve Bank applied international best practice according to Basel III in the way they dealt with, with ABLE. They, they broke it up into two banks. They, they encouraged other banks and investors to come in and, and show confidence in the process by, by putting up the 10 billion rand. Uh, they appointed a curator, and, and they're managing this process and have managed this process very well. Mm. So it shows that, that we can have a hiccup in the banking sector in South Africa. We can all come to the party to manage that hiccup and, and continue to show the consistent message that our banking sector in this country is very stable and will remain stable. Mm -hmm. And we can deal with these issues. So I think it was a way, I mean, what happened, obviously we can explore, but the way we dealt with it is a very good news story. Exactly. And that might also uh, reaffirm South Africa's ratings when it comes to WEF reports with regard to our financial standing. I mean, certainly um, uh, from the ratings perspective, and maybe just to clarify that one point, it was another rating agency no, that, had yes, that, that had yes. to adjust ratings and, uh, and, and wasn't very happy. Uh, from our perspective, really, I mean, this was textbook resolution of a failing bank. Mm. Uh, timely and, uh, and, and, and in a very transparent way and quickly. Uh, so from that perspective uh, and the way the Reserve Bank handled ABLE, uh, nothing to criticize really. Exactly. And, and overall, when you look at the South African banking system, 
uh, we still believe it is a strong banking system. Uh, yes, there are issues in this context of like low growth, high household leverage and, and so on. But uh, for emerging markets or by emerging market standards or even sort of developed market standards, the South African banking system is a strong banking system. Well, we're happy to hear about that and hopefully that uh, does increase the level of confidence in investors. We've got a minute to go to wrap this up. I have fought for more time, but unfortunately <laughs> such is the <laughs> industry of television. Edward, if we kick off with you, your closing comments, thumbs up, thumbs down? I think generally for the minister's messaging, thumbs up. I think what are the gaps for me? You know, we have a crisis of growth. We're not using it sufficiently. We're looking at selling non-core assets. I think we need to be bolder mm -hmm. and look at selling more of the state-owned assets, looking at bringing in other investors other than the state and really bringing in private management where it matters so that we can drive efficiencies, create jobs and drive growth. I think we have to do more, we can do more and the crisis is a great opportunity to do so. Herman, very quickly, thumbs I think up, thumbs down. In closing, down. I think for me, really what I would really appeal to South Africans, I think the leadership in particular, I think study after study, uh, the last what, five, six years, I, I think we're aware that the, our labor regime, it's to a large extent responsible for our economic mm -hmm. uh, non-performance. And I think uh, it's one area that we can really uh, deal with without actually throwing money at our, at, at our challenges. Exactly. Of course, we know that you're very confident. Unfortunately, we have to leave it there as well as you are, Conrad. So we'll be watching what the ratings agencies do very closely, in particular what SMP might say. But that does conclude our look at the medium-term budget policy statement today. Many thanks to my panel of experts. Conrad Race, he's the Managing Director at Standard & Poor's. Kaz Kovadia, Managing Director of the Banking Association of South Africa. Herman Mashaba, Executive Chairman of Libadzi Investments. And Edward Gisvetter, CEO of Alexander Forbes. Well, do stay with us, because after the break, we do show our focus to closing about West Africa and unpack how the West African markets have closed today. Do stay tuned for that.